Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, we're going to talk about the new champions crowned at NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver Night 2. Andrade shoots on WWE's planned Latin America expansion. We're going to talk about the WrestleMania set design, which has just been revealed with some brand new images. And has the main event of night one of WrestleMania been revealed? I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. All right, let's talk TakeOver, Stand and Deliver, night two, another night of successful wrestling it was really good i don't know why, i don't know why i phrased it like that it was a really good show uh but we had three title matches on the night and two of them saw change sorry four title matches on the night what am i talking about but two new champions crowned the successful title defenses johnny gargano retained the north american championship over big beefy bronson reed uh good match that Good match, but a terrible defeat for beefy boys around the world. My thoughts go out to the beef community today. Uh, and in the <laughs> Women's Tag Team Championship match between The Way and Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon, Blackheart and Moon retained. Now the changes, which, you know, we were always going to have a new undisputed WWE NXT Cruiserweight Champion with Jordan Devlin, wrestled Santos Escobar. Escobar won. He's the undisputed Cruiserweight Champion. Difficult situation with those belts at the onset of the global health crisis because, you know, traveling restrictions meant that Jordan Devlin, who was the NXT Cruiserweight Champion, couldn't get to the USA to defend his belt against anyone. NXT UK was shut down for a while, so they came up with the interim championship. Escobar had that, but it's done now. He's the champion. No nonsense. And speaking of no nonsense, in the night's main event, Karrion Cross defeated Finn Balor to become a two-time NXT champion. Uh, it was a crafty match from Balor, being a bit evasive, trying to use the monster's bulk and size and aggression against him, trying to lay traps, and he almost tapped him out at one point, which would have been a shocking result for sure. And by the end of the day, Cross just had too much for him, he overpowered him towards the end, just smashed his head in uh, <laughs> pretty much for the win. He's a two-time champion after having to relinquish that belt in August due to injury, so I think it's something that a lot of people predicted before the event. But it sets the brand off in an interesting new direction. Uh, two good nights of solid takeover action, and now we are ready for WrestleMania. Yeah, I think the best way to describe night two of NXT TakeOver is hard-hitting. Santos Escobar, Jordan Devlin took some bad old bumps in that ladder match, particularly Devlin, uh, for the finish of that match. Weird as well that Santos Escobar, I suppose, was a, the heel? I don't really know the heel, heel face dynamic they had in that match, because then Santos Escobar came down oh sorry the Legado del Fantasma came down and interfered but he won but he celebrated with his kid and the fans <laughs> were sort of cheering I don't know what was going on there um hard hitting yeah Jesus Christ uh, Johnny Gargano and Bronson Reed nailed each other in that I mean you can probably guess what happened in Karrion Cross versus Finn Balor as Andy described it and then the unsanctioned match which was oh it was long oh it was long it was very they long beat the piss out of each other and spoiler alert congratulations to Kyle O'Reilly who emerged victorious after hitting Adam Cole with a flying knee off the top rope whilst there was a chain wrap around his knee and Adam Cole's head was next to a chair so it was yeah yeah that's how you win a wrestling match I suppose I'm uh, very excited to see we, where NXT goes from here and, and what they do next as they move to Tuesday nights. Of course, after winning the Wednesday night war, this was a marathon, <laughs> not a sprint, in the words of Triple H, and you win a marathon by finishing first <laughs> at the end. That they did in terms they finished of finished 11 for the end. Rating. Yeah, let's not mention ratings. <laughs> it's all going to get... Don't argue about it. Let's bloody move on. Jesus don't start Christ, arguments God, about the it then. night war is over. Uh, let's move on instead and talk uh, about former oh, NXT brother. champion Andrade. Uh, who's been shooting on WWE, in particular responding to WWE President Nick Khan, not to be mistaken with AEW's Tony Khan, of course, uh, <laughs> about the promotion basically expanding into Mexico. Uh, Tony... Oh, bloody hell. Nick <laughs> Khan... I knew I was going to do that. Nick Khan uh, had a, a chat with Fightful and talking uh, about WWE potentially expanding, said this, I'm going to cut out a bit of the middle stuff here but you'll get the basic point uh talking about expanding into latin america and specifically mexico uh and he said if you look at the lucha libre product if it had the wwe touch and work ethic ultimately you could build that marketplace out where you can have certain events that are still doing 30 million viewers things you haven't seen in the u.s outside of the super bowl in the year we have a hyper focus on that region so clearly that is something wwe are targeting and andrade responded by quote tweeting the link from fightful to this interview 
<laughs> Hart's tweeting the line, more talent for sitting in the locker room. I mean, he'd know, Andy. I do I think yeah. he's got a point. Yeah, he's 100% got a point. Uh, look at the vast quantity of wrestlers that are sitting at home or sitting in catering, as it's often put, uh, doing nothing at the moment. <laughs> Bit of spice from Andrade on his way out the door. It's fun. It's fun. Don't get upset by it. It's fun. Speaking yeah, of fun, exactly. do you want to look at the WrestleMania set? It's fun. <laughs> uh, it, it, like, There's not much to analyze here, but we've got some images uploaded here from Eagle 8, WFLA, Floridian News Group, and Tim Ronka, who I read as Tim Wonka, immediately thinking he was Willy oh. Wonka's brother. I'm very sorry, Tim. Um, but sometimes my glasses don't work. Anyway, the <laughs> WrestleMania set. Look at it. It's a pirate ship. Of course it's a pirate ship. Yes. They've uh, not content with just having the pirate ship in the background at Raymond James Stadium. They've built a new one on top of the stage, and it looks awesome. Awesome. Uh, I have to say the ring looks absolutely tiny compared to this crazy structure, but it looks sick. Someone's going to jump off that. It, other than that, it's pretty much the same set as, as uh, WrestleMania 35 by the looks of things with a video screen with a gap in the middle. So it's cool stuff. It's cool stuff. Uh, I cannot wait to see this thing in full flow, and I'm glad to see that they have fully embraced the pirate's life for Mania. Exactly, exactly. Just one thing that needs needs to be added to WrestleMania 37, and it's behind Andy Murray. Um, <laughs> and uh, to be honest, I saw this. I obviously got very jazzed. It's the week of WrestleMania. WrestleMania is literally tomorrow. Oh, my God, I can't wait. Join us for our live streams for both nights for that, of course. Um, but I genuinely would probably have just been happy with just a ring in the middle of Raymond James Stadium. I'm arguably more excited about the return of fans than I am about WrestleMania. It's going to be socially distanced. It's not going to be the same, but, you know, I enjoyed, for example, the Super Bowl with fans in attendance, and it's going to be something similar to that, you have to assume. Oh, we're nearly there, lads. We've nearly made it through. I know it's not the return of fans completely, but... My God, it's going to be some noise tomorrow night. And uh, yeah, place your bets in the comments as to who's going to be coming out first. I'll tell you what, I have accidentally stumbled into an incredible seg for the final news story. But never mind who goes on first. Who goes on last? Uh, the main event of night one of WrestleMania has seemingly been revealed by one half of the competitors, Sasha Banks. She was chatting with chatting with Erica Nardini on the Token CEO podcast. Genuinely, Andy, one of the best podcasts out there that isn't What Culture Wrestling's. Uh, and she said, I've been crying all morning. It's Monday. So this was obviously a few days ago. Uh, WrestleMania is on Saturday. I can't believe this 10-year-old girl is about to live her dream and main event WrestleMania. I truly believe that. This is my first singles match at WrestleMania. We were talking about this yesterday. Andy and realized she's never won a match at Mania. Uh, and it's the first time uh, it's two African-American women will be headlining WrestleMania. This is crazy because it's bigger than me. Few takeaways here, Andy. I honestly thought uh, that WWE would go for Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley. This should have been the main event straight off the back of the Royal Rumble, but they botched the build so badly. Uh, I could understand if they didn't put it on, despite the fact these two girls are probably going to steal the show, in my opinion. Also, didn't realize that Sasha Banks was 10 years old. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Mara, it's remarkable the kind of career that she's had since starting as a literal infant. <laughs> she's, she's had a hard paper round if she's 10 years old. <laughs> killing the business, killing the game. I uh, know Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair is the match I'm probably most looking forward to on the night. So I'd be very happy Don't to lie, see that. Don't lie, Shane McMahon versus Braun Strowman, but it's the second best. <laughs> second best, all right, there we go. Uh, but So I'd be very happy to see them close out the show. We'll see what happens. Uh, Vince is Vince. He might just put his big beefy boys in that slot, but we'll see. We'll find out. Yeah, I feel like Sasha should know not to get her hopes up for WrestleMania. We all know what happened two years ago, Sasha. Oh, yeah. But yes, uh, in terms of match quality, I think it will be the best match on the night, and it should main event because Bianca Belair won the Royal Rumble. But rules like that don't apply to WWE. Uh, right, let's move on to your Twitter questions at What Culture WWE. Of course, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, first question take comes from Derek. Derek? No, not his name, Adam. David Erichhausen. <laughs> okay. Sorry, David. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. He says, good morning, guys. Now that he's not NXT champion, uh, I can see Finn Balor making a big main roster return. Where would you like to see him post-WrestleMania, Raw, SmackDown, or stay in NXT? I could definitely see him going back to the main roster as well, but I'd prefer to see him in NXT. Um, I've really enjoyed this run. Like, really enjoyed this run as the Prince. I think he's been delivering some of the best work of his WWE career throughout from the very start of this run down in NXT. So I wouldn't like to see that end. You know, that's not to say he couldn't do that on Raw or SmackDown, but he'd have more people controlling him and uh, he might not have the same level of freedom. So for me, 
I'd like to see him stay in NXT, for sure. Yeah, uh, I can't decide really, because I feel like he's completely rediscovered his character and had just been sensational down in NXT. So down in NXT, so dismissively. Um, <laughs> and so if he brought that to the main roster, yeah, maybe it could really light up something like Monday Night Raw, which is desperately in need of a real character like that, in my opinion. Um, and if he sticks around in NXT, yeah, he's probably going to have great matches. I'd say just give him a bit of time off now, like make me miss him. Uh, for a while rather than have him come back and immediately, I don't know, re-challenge the title or just have some feud. But also the danger is, is he not becomes stale but just gets stuck there like like your Garganos and your Champers who have had uh, a great takeover week, of course, but sometimes they kind of just get stuck because it's like they're not fighting for the world title. What are they doing? Either way, I think someone like Finn Balor who's got a, a great eye for, for matches and, and storylines and stuff, I think he's going to be sensational. But who knows? Uh, very excited to see where he goes next from here. Second question today comes from regular contributor Matt Reigns. I wouldn't mess up Matt's name. Uh, Matt says, Good morning, <laughs> gents. Congrats on hitting 2 million subscribers. Thank you for that, Matt. Uh, it's incredibly well deserved. Credit for this question goes to Brian Zelem who says, Should AW you do blood and guts in the Jaguars stadium. Uh, two rings in Daly's place is quite a tight fit. I'm just bloody thankful yeah, we're getting be. blood and guts, to be honest, Andy. Yeah, same here. So it, the Jacksonville Jaguar stadium is a very interesting question. And you would say, yes, there's more space. And yes, it's a grander setting. But I think it would be very tough to do that unless you have a crowd. Uh, unless you have a considerable crowd as well. You wouldn't want to do that in a big, like, cavernous empty stadium where the thousand voices of the socially distanced audience are just kind of ringing around and disappearing into the air of the night. So it'd be very difficult. And to be honest, at the moment with where we're at, I don't know if AEW could sell enough tickets to make that worthwhile. You're talking like tens of thousands uh, to make that worthwhile in a big stadium, similar to what WWE are doing at, uh, at WrestleMania. So um, yeah, theoretically, I think it would be a lot cooler with a big roaring stadium crowd, but the time isn't right. Mm, yeah, I think it's going to be in that, in that cavernous uh, Davies place that's sort of, where they're all on top of it. I think that probably is going to work better, yeah. like you say. Just whether or not they, they, you know, in a normal time, they probably would be able to sell the tickets. In the with the ongoing global bastard, it's understandable people may be hesitating to yeah, for sure. go and buy those tickets. So who knows? Uh, right, final question today comes from Tenacious Tom, who says Chris Jericho Indeed. recently spoke about how he has never won a world title as a babyface. Do you think there is a second AEW title run as a babyface, possibly after the Inner Circle breakup, leaving him solo? Oh, man. Um, I, they might go back to it. I mean, the, for me, the Le Champion run was tremendous, and I thought it was a great choice by them uh, to, to have him hold the belt first, and he had a great run. But it would be difficult to do that again. I think. Uh, Jericho's had his run with the belt. And yeah. at this stage, there are so many young up and coming wrestlers that would benefit more from, from having that spotlight, you know, in a year or two or whatever. So uh, I don't think he needs it. I don't think they need to do it again. Uh, the first run was great, but I think that was enough uh, regardless of alignments. Yes, exactly. I think you, you, off the top of your head, Hangman Page, MJF, down the line, eventually someone like a Jungle Boy like. If they're gonna, I'm not saying that they are, but if they're gonna draw comparisons to WCW, that would be putting the title back on Chris Jericho yeah. just so he can have a run as a baby face. Uh, but I can see him being a baby face like TNT champion, for example. I think that yeah. might be a perfect fit for I someone like him. Uh, but let us know your thoughts on that in the comments section below. We'll move on to today's and finally, and it's a little bit self indulgent, but it's totally yeah, self indulgent. It's a hell of a milestone. We just wanna say a massive thank you to all of you who have subscribed. Uh, yesterday we hit. 2 million subscribers here on the channel apt that it is just days away from Wrestlemania yeah. um, it is you know uh, credit to all the hard work of the guys that you don't see on camera for the most 100%. part 100% um, so you know a massive thank you to all of our editors and our writers who just make the stuff that Andy and I do on camera so much easier but most of all it's down to you guys we wouldn't have hit two subscribers well we would me and Andy <laughs> subscribed uh, but <laughs> to ourselves <laughs> but without you guys we wouldn't have got to this incredible landmark and yeah, uh, yeah more more of the same basically Andy yeah exactly man uh, ultimately like just I, it's really hard for me to express how grateful uh I am that I'm able to do this crazy job for a living and it's thanks to the people who click that button and you know, like and share and subscribe and leave nasty comments. Oh, everyone <laughs> who's interacted with us uh, over the past few years, thank you so much. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for your support. And now we just need 2 million podcast subscribers. We're just a bit off 
just a way <laughs> off for that one. What culture wrestling, wherever you get your podcast from. But yes, once again, thanks from all of us here at What Culture and at What Culture Wrestling. Uh, because as Andy said, we wouldn't get to do this bloody ridiculous job without you guys. So thank you once again for that. Uh, let us know your thoughts on that and all today's news stories in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, as I said, on either iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast from for daily wrestling podcasts. Plus, let us know your thoughts, Twitter questions, WrestleMania predictions at What Culture WWE. Well, actually, there, follow both of us. You can follow Andy Murray at. At Andy H. Murray. The H stands for, hey, I'll see you tomorrow night on the WrestleMania 37 live stream with the very good looking, very handsome Adam Nicholas. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Oh, I want more sleep. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Adam Wilborn and join me on Sunday night with the equally gorgeous Phil Chambers uh, for night two of WrestleMania's live stream reactions. Uh, but for now, my thanks to Andy Murray, to Derek, to you for watching, and we will see you soon. <laughs>